And it's 8 o'clock. We're live on ATV. Welcome to tonight's edition of Fact Sheet. Live on ATV, live on Facebook as well. Tonight we're talking about a very, very important subject matter, which has to do with you and me. Young man begins life, thinks about owning a property. This property we are talking about is a home, is a house. It has to be built on a plot of land. The acquisition of that plot of land is a concern many of us have when it comes to acquiring a plot of land. Why? There are land guys to deal with. There are people who, who own plots of land who will sell it to multiple people. And so you'd buy a plot of land and the owners are more than five. Who protects you? Who addresses your concerns for you when you find yourself in such a situation? This has become a deterrent for many who want to own properties in Accra because they are afraid of the land factor. The middlemen in there who play the role leading to many of us buying plot of land that may not be in the name of the owner. And so the government takes steps to ensure that when you're buying a plot of land, you buy having that open mind that you are safe. And so it has to do with openness. It has to do with fairness when it comes to acquisition of land and the protection of the properties of people when it comes to the acquisition of land in this country. Tonight, we are talking about the new Land Act 2020. What does it seek to achieve? How does it seek to protect us? How does it seek to bring innovation when it comes to even the registration of land? How does it seek to protect partners in a marriage who may own a property? All these are things that this act seeks to protect. Tonight, that's what we are talking about, land issues on fact sheet. Some will say, it no be easy. A car land, you go buy, but problem go come. We've had this several times. Tonight, we'll try and demystify that act and what it seeks to achieve. My name is Samuel Shen. I'm glad to welcome you to tonight's edition of Fact Sheet Show. It's live and so you can share it on various platforms and groups you belong to so we all can learn a thing or two. We're taking a short breather. When we come back, I'll introduce you to my guests who would help me to do justice to the issues tonight. Stay with us. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, today marks exactly six months since the President of the Republic, His Excellency Nana Adudan Kwakufuadu, gave presidential assent to the Land Act 2020, Act 1036, for it to be gazetted to become law. Since its entry into force, the Act has generated a lot of public discussions to ensure that the general public understands the requirements of the law and the innovations introduced by this Act. Therefore, I directed the Lands Commission to hold a national symposium to sensitize the general public about the content of the law to facilitate its effective implementation. The object of the Act, as is evident from the long title, is not just the harmonization and consolidation of laws relating to land, but also to ensure sustainable and administration and management and effective and efficient land tenure in Ghana. The situation where a person registers his land with a Lands Commission only to learn later that the same Lands Commission has registered the same land in the name of another person is baffling. In no civilized jurisdiction can you have two conflicting land title certificates in respect of the same land. It cannot happen. It cannot happen, and it should not happen in our country. Our quest to transform our national economy to bring about the much needed development and prosperity cannot be achieved if we fail to anchor an effective land administration. That's the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources. And like I said, our focus tonight 
is on land matters. The Act 1036, that's what we're talking about. And I'm joined in the studio by Nana Kujo Esilfi, his head, Land uh, Registration Division, Tema, and uh, Mrs. Beatrice Akwene uh, Kum, who is the head, Survey and Mapping Division, Tema District as well. They'll help us understand what this new law seeks to achieve. Uh, we are told that it seeks to consolidate existing laws when it comes to land administration in the country. Uh, it seeks to allow for fairness and openness when it comes to land acquisition in this country. The security of those who are purchasing lands are guaranteed and protected by this new law. How does it intend to use technology to ensure that uh, we can register our lands without going through those cumbersome processes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, and you're welcome to the studio. Good evening. Good evening. I, I trust you're doing well? Yes. Very well. All right. And so good evening to your cherished viewers. They are grateful that uh, you acknowledge them. So let's start the conversation with what the Act 1036 is all about because we've heard so much that has been said about it and what it seeks to achieve. Uh, Nana, can you walk us through what the, uh, the entire law is all about, why it's so different? Um, thank you. Uh, this law um, has been long coming. Um, mm. It's taken quite some time, quite a couple of years in trying to pass this law. Um, Hitherto, our laws relating to land were found in various legislations. Um, sometimes um, some of these laws were conflicting. Some also caused some confusion um, regarding some of the, the, the provisions. Mm. And um, in 1999, I believe so, um, the government of Ghana that day, um, of the day, the government of, of, of the day then um, put together what we call the land policy. And um, in that land policy, um, one of the recommendations was, or one of the areas that um, they identified as being problematic was the various land um, laws that we had um, conflicting and the confusing nature of um, these laws and also um, some judicial decisions um, that um, also contributed to the confusion and so um, I think uh, work started then on trying to consolidate these laws all these laws and uh, in order to have one monolithic um, document uh, one reference document which you could go to as a source material for our land laws. So effort had been put in since then. Um, there have been various um, committees and uh, persons who have um, helped bring about this law and um, it received, it was passed, um, um, the bill was passed into law in 2020 last year and uh, received presidential assent on the 23rd of December last year. And so um, basically that is uh, the checkered history, how this law has come about. All right, so let me ask uh, Beatrice then, I mean, the core mandate because uh, of the Lands Commission, we hear about Lands Commission, Lands Commission, Lands, and you are spearheading this whole education process when it comes to this law. What's your core mandate? Um, the law is our baby. Mm. Um, for the first time, Lands Commission is spearheading it so as to um, help the chaotic system we have when mm. it comes to uh, land administration in the country. So it's being a baby. We want to educate everybody, even staff, so that we, we know that uh, this law exists, offenses are there. If you should violate it, you see yourself behind bars, or let's say 
your sleeping place will change mm. so that we can have an effective land administration in the country. All right, so I, I want us to simplify the conversation without necessarily making it very technical. I want us to look at some of the fundamental problems people face when it comes to land tenure issues, land ac acquisition issues. So the first concern people would have when it comes to land acquisition in this country has to do with the multiple sale of lands to uh, you know, people by an individual or a family. How does this act seek to cure that, if you can walk us through? Very well. Um, I'm happy you don't want it to be technical because, I mean, uh, majority of our viewers um, are not, I mean, skilled in the law and, and mm. so it will be good to step it down to their level. Um, these are some of the problems. What you just described are some of, it's just one of the very teething problems that um, we have in relation to land acquisition in the country, mm. multiple sales of land. Um, that has been um, a criminal act all, all, I mean, all this while. However, you, 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 don't, you didn't find that in any specific law. This land act, Act 10, 1036, um, makes provision um, where it punishes anyone who doubles in such activity, where you know that the land that you are selling or you are giving out to anyone for that matter um, has already been given to someone else, or um, you don't even have an interest in that land. If you go ahead and do that, it punishes such acts. Uh, and so we are happy that it addresses this particular problem. And we, we, we hope that, I mean, through the implementation of this act, um, this issue will be no more. Once a few people are made examples, I mean, um, um, through the implementation of the act, and they are put before the courts and um, jailed, as the act provides for, um, then it would serve as a deterrence to anybody else who would want to engage in such acts. All right, so I want us to focus on the proactiveness of this law. So that if, for instance, I'm going to purchase a piece of land or a plot of land from somebody, what is the position of this act in terms of processes I would go through to firstly avoid the situation of being sold the same plot of land uh, which has been given to other people? How proactive is this law? Very well. Um, first of all, this law has introduced what we call the customary land secretariat. Mm. Now, um, it, will be, it will be good to just summarize um, the nature of our land tenure system mm. um, in Ghana. We, we, we don't have um, land owned by just one um, let's say, land owning group in Ghana. Mm. Lands in Ghana are classified either as two lands, as kin lands, as clan lands, as family lands, or mm. individuals. Mm. And then state lands, or yeah. public, what we call public lands. Now, um, because of the various um, land owning groups, sometimes it presents a challenge when somebody wants to acquire land in, in Ghana. Now, the ordinary thing or the proper thing to do when acquiring land, I've said variously to people that you should go inspect the land yourself. It's good to actually see the land for yourself because in this country, people have sold land to people where they have never seen the land, done, claim to have done some form of registration. After several years, they try to go visit the land and they realize that what was sold to them was in the sea. Mm. It has happened before. And, and so the first thing to do is to actually go see for yourself the land that um, you are purporting to purchase or to buy. And then you cause um, a surveyor, a licensed surveyor for that matter, to prepare for you a site plan of the particular parcel of land that you intend to purchase. Now, the law provides that the site plans must be, must be signed 
or must be endorsed by the director of survey and mapping division of the lands commission that is how you would know that the site plan that has been given to you or prepared for you has gone through some rigorous checks mm -hmm. in order to make sure that um, 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 it's it stands um, the various tests or its quality let me put it that way and then after the site plan is prepared for you conduct a search and um, within our premises now I mentioned that the law um, provides for the setting up of customary land secretariat mm -hmm. now the law provides that all land owning groups be it stool skin clans or family must mandatorily set up with the technical assistance of the lands commission and the office of administrator of stool lands set up these customary land secretariat where um, land transactions, customary land transactions will be recorded. And so if you want to purchase um, um, a parcel of land, you can approach um, these sec um, secretariats, customary land secretariats, um, to deal with. All right, so who is going to set up this customary land secretariat we speak of? Is it an office space where, for instance, if I am a buyer, I have an interest I can go to and then let's say make inquiries who's going to set it up the, the, if I may mm -hmm. the, the customer land secretariat are going to be set up by the the land the various land owning groups themselves so if it's a stool land the stool will set it up mm -hmm. however the law provides that it must be with the assistance the technical assistance and supervision of the lands commission together with the office of administrator of two lands mm. and so yes it is an office where you can walk to so these secretariats basically will manage the lands for and on behalf of the stool all right so who, who funds the construction of the secretariat or if it's an office space they are going to rent who funds it um now, the reason why I'm asking all yes. these questions is this. You know, sometimes in going to purchase a plot of land, yes. you can meet, let's say, a, a chief or a land owner who says, okay, uh, bring me a car and come and take a plot of land. Mm -hmm. That person is taking not liquid or physical cash. He's taking a car. And so I am looking at that individual being consulted by another stool to say, okay, all right, the law still plays that we have a customary land uh, secretariat. Mm -hmm. That person they didn't necessarily get cash, but he acquired a car. Only option would be to sell that car. Let's say there are five stool lands and the leaders of these stool lands have all taken cars. I am imagining how you know, the law stipulates that these things will be done. That's why I'm asking this question. Yes. Um, um, during the, the land administration project, mm. um, one was set up for the Bawi family. Okay. Bawi, Quartier family. Okay. That's Bawi. Mm. So presently, when you go there, it is very easy for such land transactions. Mm. And uh, the same thing was done for um, Asante Hene. Mm. Yes. Okay. So we have the customary land secretariat there. Okay. And it's very easy for such transactions. You see, um, the fact that the chief should request for a vehicle, mm. it is um, in inverted commerce, mm. selfish in quotes, because uh, he, the land is not his. Mm. He's just the caretaker of the land okay. on behalf of his subjects. Mm. So he's not supposed to have taken the vehicle. Mm. He's supposed to have a record of all the transactions and should be able to account to his people mm. for all the transactions that has been done. And I think that also is the reason why we are having such problems of uh, the chief selling the land uh, members of the family don't know also selling uh, sometimes they tell you um, we are members of the family so if he has sold it I could as well sell it okay. which brings about the double sale all right so one, one critical question has to do with per the law what are the timelines for these stools or these clans or families 
to establish this secretariat? Because it's, it plays a pivotal role in ensuring this double seal matter does not pop up. Um, um, very well. Um, unfortunately, um, because the law puts the onus of establishing these customary land secretariats on the land owning groups, um, mm. be it a stool, a skin, a clan, or a family, there are no specific um, timelines mm. for setting these up in the law. Mm. And so there's a lot of um, work that the Lands Commission, together with the Office of Administrator of Stool Lands, um, um, is to do regarding educating these land owning groups about the need and the benefits of setting up these um, customary land secretariats. Mm. And then if I may, continuing from where uh, Mrs. Com, um, Beatrice left off, um, the law actually describes the, say, the chief, uh, Tendana, um, head of a clan or head of a family, as fiduciaries. Mm. Fiduciaries as in they hold the lands in trust for their subjects, as she okay. rightly said. Yeah. And they are to be accountable to the, their subjects um, um, in these transactions, land transactions that they engage in. And the law also penalizes them where they flout um, um, their, their duties as fi fiduciaries. And so that is one um, aspect um, in trying to deal with these um, the problem that you you described and so we we hope that in educating them about their responsibilities as well as the benefits that they intend to gain from establishing these um, customary land secretariats they will come on board and some of these problems will be reduced to its barest minimum so let me create a scenario of uh going through this process of you know multiple sale of land so i realized that uh, someone has sold me a plot of land which has been sold to you as well what are the remedies in, in terms of ensuring that punitive you know measures are taken against whoever sold the land to me yep. uh, according to the new act mm. you need to report to the authorities mm. um the police should help mm. then it could be uh, taken to court, and then the court will decide. You see, um, what you should uh, you should do is you report. The police take it up. It becomes a dispute case, sort of, where sometimes ADR might be used, mm. but most often it goes to court, and then it is up to the court to decide who is the rightful owner but the perpetrator would be punished. So, you know the court system in the country, how long sometimes a case can travel before finally uh, some conclusion is arrived at as to who really the owner of that land is. So for instance, I realize that indeed you have sold me a plot of land that you have sold to uh, your colleague who is beside you. There is evidence enough to show that he has sold the same plot of land to the two of us. Do we necessarily have to go through the court system? Well, um, the law provides for um, going through ADL in trying to settle land disputes as a, as, as a, f um, I mean, as, um, a point of first instance. Mm. Um, and where ADL fails, then you can go to court. So you would have to exhaust um, that process before then you can you can um, take the matter on or file a case in court in trying to resolve the, the dispute but as she rightly said mm. the perpetrator of that act would be punished because it's a criminal the act criminalizes that that act of um, double sale and so that will be different that will be a criminal remedy and that will be different from a civil remedy in trying to settle the disputes in court and also um, the the person or the victim can also bring a civil action against the perpetrator of the act mm. as well and so you can fight it on on those two fronts whilst the police or the criminal system deals with the person on the criminal side 
you can also bring a case against um, the perpetrator of the act in a civil court um, for damages in in, 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 in in that particular scenario. All right. Now, I, I, I'm trying for us to simplify the conversation, not to make it too technical, yes. uh, because it's, it's a huge document. And so I want us to look at the you know, issues that usually pop up when it comes to conversations about land. And so that's why I'm going the tangent I'm going. So if you'd follow me as we are having the conversation. So now let us try and deal with the issue of land guards, because the law seeks to provide security for either the new landowner or the landowner who intends to sell the property to somebody and then land guards activities may be preventing that individual from even engaging in that transaction in the first place. What's the position of the law on land guardism? The law actually frowns on it. Mm. It's, it's a criminal act. Mm. And um, um, the sentence when you are, um, when it happens that you are, excuse me, when it happens that um, you are found on the, you, you fall on the other side of the law, there's a sentence for it, which mm. is ranging between a year and ten years. Mm. Yes. But, but, but does the law describe who can be classified as a land guard? Th does yes. it? Yes, well, it does. The, 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 law, the law in Section 12, actually, yes. um, mm. it would be good. Yeah, if, you could, if you could read it for us. It would be good to read for. that. Yeah. Um, um, Section 12 is titled Protection of Land and Interest in Land. Mm. And he actually interestingly uses the, 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 the word or the phrase a person. Okay. So it says, section 12 one says, a person who A, unlawfully exercises or purports to exercise supervision or control of land, control of land development in a location. B, has no interest in land. And I, extorts money or other benefits from, per from a person who has an interest in land, or II, prevents a developer from developing the land, or C, personally or through another person, unlawfully uses force or violence to prevent a person who has an interest in land from having access to the land, or drives away that person with an interest in land from the land, commits an offense, and is liable on summary conviction to a term of imprisonment of no less than five years and no more than 15 years. Mm. From that this, it's it's described such or uses the language a person, and so yeah. any person Inable. who is found to be engaging in what the law has described, so preventing a lawful owner from assessing his land, from developing his land, a person who does not have an interest in land but then engages in these things, a person who uses force or violence who doesn't have an interest in land and uses force or violence in preventing the lawful owner from developing his land falls foul of the law mm. and it says that and is liable on summary conviction to a term of imprisonment of not less than five years and not more than 15 years so that is how long you would go to jail a, a very a very interesting one you know if somebody puts an impediment you know, before you, so yes. it's difficult for you to develop your property. Does digging fee fall part of the impediment where you bought a plot of land from somebody, you're going to develop a plot of land, uh, some few young men walk up to you and say, you have to pay digging fee of 2,000, or let's say 1,000 Ghana cities, otherwise, we won't let you work. Is it captured here in terms of the protection of the rights of the new land owner? I yes, think it so. does. I think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, it does. this is very, this is very clear. Yes, it does. It says a person. So mm. once, whatever you are doing can be found, or we can find expression in the law regarding what you are doing, then this relates to you. Anything. And, uh, and it doesn't stop only there. Yes. Mm. It talks about. In fact, it goes on to say the person who acts through that person, and in fact. Yes. The punishment, so I, I choose to describe it as whoever procures um, a land guard. Mm. 
and your punishment is actually more stringent than yeah. than the land guard because the law the law provides that on summary conviction um, you are liable to a term of imprisonment of not less than 10 years and not more than 15 years. Mm. Whereas the land guard or the person who engages in these acts himself is liable to 5 and 15. So that is the 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 the, the courts have that laxity. So mm. the minimum for the land guard would be 5. Whereas the person who actually procures that land guard um, has 10, minimum of 10. And so we think that this is punitive enough to, to, to act as a deterrent to anyone who um, engages in this act. Because now the, the, the courts have that um, um, room, yes. so that room. They cannot go be below the minimum. Mm. So they have that room. And, 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 and uh, as I mentioned earlier, we hope that once a few people are found and dealt with, it would serve as a deterrent, and hopefully, these issues will be will be brought to its barest minimum. Let me make the announcement that uh, the show is being listened to now in Tamale on Nisim 100.1. Uh, because the people in Tamale have, uh, uh, you know, hinted that they are really enjoying the conversation and so uh, they are following the conversation live in Tamale. But one important question I would ask is, at the time when this wasn't an act but it was a bill, what was the level of, you know, consultation with the chiefs, with landowners, with the stolands and the rest of them? Because I'm asking myself, if over the years this mindset of digging fee has been in the system for, let's say, 20, 30 years. How then do I, as a new landowner, tell, let's say, a family head who comes and says, before you start work, you need to pay digging fee. Are they sensitized enough to know that digging fee is outlawed? Um, From the history mm. of the Act, mm. you could see that a lot of consultation went into it. Um, chiefs were part of the committee that came out with it. So we expect that as Lands Commission has started with the education, we expect that we would have invitation from the various houses of chiefs for the education to sink, sink down. Mm. And then, you see, um, we could start from we, 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 we are starting from the national, then it will trickle down to regional, and then... Uh, to the assembly level. Yes. That is how uh, Lands Commission is trying to get the education going, so that everybody gets involved. Because um, um, it, will, it will not be fair if the education doesn't sink down, and then uh, people... Uh, being jailed as a result of this. Mm. So everybody, I, I always tell people that everybody should get involved because development always starts from where? The land. Okay. So if we don't get involved and we have such a chaotic system, how do we get our country developed? How do we invite investors into the country? So the land being the foundation affects virtually everything if, if if i might i may add um mm. very eminent persons were part of the committee that actually put this um law um together uh, the bill that worked on the bill i mean we had um, former justice of the supreme court we had a current justice of the supreme court we had um very very eminent persons as she mentioned we had chiefs very respect, respected chiefs um, on, on that committee. And they actually toured the country, um, engaged widely in, in putting this together. And that is why, for the first time, we see um, expression, some of the problems find expression um, in this law. 
and so um, on a broader note on a broader level there had been that engagement and now that the law has actually come into being we are still going ahead with the education and the engagement in order to bring um, to the notice of everyone the provisions of these acts as it relates to you so there there is something in the act that relates to every single person mm. so it's very important that as she mentioned that we all get involved in trying to understand and know the provisions of the act through and through and uh, be able to um, abide by these provisions so we are not found foul of the law it's 20 minutes to the top of the hour now and if you just join us we are talking about the new land act act 1036 we're talking about what it means for you as a young man who intends to acquire a plot of land if you own a plot of land what it means for you when you decide to sell that plot of land we're trying to educate ourselves when it comes to you know land matters in the country we all know how uh, difficult it's been and how scary sometimes it's been when it comes to the acquisition of lands in this country and so my guest uh, Nana Kujo Esilfi and uh, Mrs. Beatrice Akpenikum are here with me and that uh, they are explaining the issues in the law to us we are trying very hard because of the time we have to simplify the conversation so that we all understand so the conversation does not become very very technical but as you're watching the show this evening you can go to our Facebook wall and if you have a question that you would want for me to ask Nana and uh, Auntie Beatrice uh, you can just put it on our wall just go to Facebook and look for ETV Ghana and then I'll read those comments and questions you may have and uh, share with them so they can attempt to answer them for us but do we really understand as a people the processes one would have to go through to even think of acquiring a plot of land? Do we understand? I, I think that actually is the main problem. Mm. All we need to do is to walk into any of the Lands Commission offices mm. and inquire. But we wouldn't. We we'll prefer to stand under the tree and ask people. Um, yesterday, I had a call from a lady. Mm. And um, she said she came by the office. And um, she wanted to do registration. She was directed somewhere else. Okay. She went around, got to the courts, and eventually somebody who had dealt with the office before mm. gave my number to her okay. should it be so no okay so i advised her anytime you have anything to discuss about land just enter any of the lands commission offices and okay. make inquiries don't stand somewhere and uh, listen to hearsay because it is hearsay that is messing up the situation and making it worse so so if i contemplate on acquiring a plot of land the first place i need to go to is lands commission yes is, is that is that how the process must start yes okay go to lands commission mm. and make inquiries i am interested in this piece of land what do i do okay anybody in the office should be able to direct you as mm. to what to do okay what do you do? I am interested in a piece of land. The first thing you need to do, Kojo said it earlier, is investigate. How do I investigate? Go to the, where the land is. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need to make inquiries around. That is one aspect of making investigation. Mm. Then you could get a surveyor to survey the land, prepare a plan out of the survey, and then conduct a search. Mm. Sometimes we have situations where the owners might give you a document. We have had instances where documents were given, searches were conducted, 
It was in the name of those who gave out the document. Mm. But you go to the ground, what is there is different. Okay. We, we've had instances like that. Mm. What is there is different. Um, people are being smart. They'll give you documents they know they have registered and show you per location a different place. So you really need the services of a surveyor okay. to make sure that where I think I am acquiring is not in conflict with the documents I have been given. Mm. So when you are given the documents they call an indenture or land yes. title or because sometimes when you're given that you feel you own a plot of land now what next when you have that uh, indenture they always give you w what does it even mean does it necessarily mean that you have a land you're the owner of a land no. when you are given that indenture no it doesn't an indenture uh, my lawyer friends will say it's just an agreement between the buyer and the seller mm. and how does an agreement hold for an agreement to hold, there are several processes involved, right? Yes. Um, if I may, um, so if you have gone through the necessary process and you are satisfied that the land you intend to purchase, first of all, you need to satisfy yourself that the land you need to purchase mm. is, or should I say, actually belongs to the person, the, the vendor. Mm. And, um, or the land you need to lease actually belongs to the lessor and before you actually deal with that lessor. It's also very, very important to deal or seek the services of professionals um, where you are having issues. Um, people wait till it's too late to actually seek the service of professionals and um, seeking the service of a lawyer and acquiring land because, I mean, it's a, it's a very capital intensive venture. Th that's where the problem exactly. is. So, because so, 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 so I tell people, land is, buying land is not like buying tomatoes in the market. Exactly. It's not like going to the market to buy tomatoes. No, because it's a lot of money, people's life savings that yes. they are putting there. And you won't seek the services of a professional. And you would go and engage in these things. And then you lose a lot of money. And then it's only when it's too late then you want to blame the Lands Commission or blame other people. So right from the start, it's important to seek the services of a professional uh, in trying to um, go through the acquisition. All right, we'll, we'll go for a short breather. When we come back, there are a few comments that people have sent on Facebook that I'll, I'll try to put to you. But I would also want to understand how long a normal land registration process must last under this law and then two the introduction of uh, technology in the land registration process or land acquisition process so two questions when we are back from the short commercial break we're taking a short breather when we come back two questions we would ask and i'm sure uh, we'll be bringing the conversation to one end but tomorrow god willing uh, would have lands commission same offices or different ones also be on the happy morning show and i'll be there uh, from 5.30 to 9 a.m. I want you to make a date with myself and my team as we delve deeper into some of these issues we are raising so you can have a better understanding and appreciation of the dynamics when it comes to land acquisition in the country. We'll be right back. I would like to emphasize the need for all stakeholders to rally together to ensure that the provisions of the Land Act are implemented effectively and resources are channeled towards it. For instance, the Land Act provides that our eminent chiefs, clan, and family heads, the Tindanes, who are the custodians of approximately 80% of the land area of Ghana, they are required to establish customary land secretariats to improve the management of their lands. However, our traditional authorities will require technical and professional assistance from Lands Commission, Office of the Administrator of School Lands, and the Land Use and Spatial Planning Authority to est establish these secretaries. If we just sit down and say they will be established, we're very happy about the protection of spousal interest. 
in, in land for properties acquired during marriage. So when you acquire properties during marriage, and for a lot of my male colleagues, you can't go and sell it without the knowledge of your wife. Uh, this has now, uh, our spouses have now been protected uh, under this particular act. Uh, so, if, you know, if you try to do it, you fall foul of the law uh, and, and so on. And, 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 and I think. And you welcome back to the fact sheets live on ATV, live on Facebook as well. Interesting comments on our Facebook. Well, let me try and uh, get a few of them. But even before that, uh, Nana, uh, the point about, uh, you know, how long it takes to acquire the title for your plot of land you'd have purchased. And then the point about the issue that Beatrice raised as to whether an indenture constitutes an agreement or an indenture constitutes ownership of a plot of land. In, in short summary. All right, so um, I mentioned that when you are satisfied, when, mm -hmm. when you go through the process that um, I enumerated earlier, then that culminates into that indenture that is engrossed for you. Mm. That is an agreement between you and the vendor, um, or you and the, the lessor, as the case may be. And then that agreement is binding between the two of you. Okay. Then you then move on to the next level by doing the registration. Now, the law mandates that you need to do the registration, and mm. so you do not put the indenture under your bed and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. You need to go through the entire process of the registration. Now, the, in Accra, we have the title registration, which um, has been de declared for the entire greater Accra. So with the title registration, is the, basically the government um, guaranteeing title to you that you are indeed, in quotes, the owner of that particular um, um, property. Mm. And so um, there are some processes that we would need to go but, through. But, but usually, how long does that pro is that process supposed to take? All other things being equal. It, it had differed in the past. Mm. However, however, this law mandates us to complete registration from the time you submit your document till finish within 90 days, three months. Within three months? Within three months. So okay. there's a lot of responsibility on us to ensure that we go through the process as quickly as possible in order to issue you with your certificate within that period. Um, the law even goes on to say that if there's nothing wrong with your document, if everything checks out, um, in, in quick summary, if everything checks out and we are not requiring anything, nothing has been created or anything, and um, we don't communicate um, a, a, um, a grant or a refusal um, of the certificate to you, then it's deemed to be registered right. within 90 days. So that is the huge responsibility that this law puts on our shoulders. And that is why we All are right, also... But, 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 but just under a minute, how much would it cost to get a title? I mean, going through all the processes, give us a sense of how much it would cost to get the title, our fees, if you do know. Our fees are approved by, by parliament. parliament. Okay. And so it's public knowledge. You okay. can walk to the offices and know um, the official fees for whatever service that you require, because there are various services. And um, I cannot, off the top of my head, mention um, how much each of them costs. Um, so you can walk into our office and demand for the fees for whatever service that you you require and right. another beginning uh, our time is very much fast spent but under a minute Beatrice so uh, all these things we are talking about in in finality what should people do and not do under a minute when it comes to land issues if you are interested in any land just walk into any of the offices of lands commission and make inquiries. Mm. Make inquiries. Anybody there should be able to educate you on what you want, where to go, where not to go, and how to be able to. Can't we find inquire? this electronically? Can't we do this electronically? Some processes are in the works in trying to 
and um, bring some technology to some of these services that we provide. But it's not foolproof yet. Mm. Um, it will require the support of everybody. And it's a huge um, um, financial uh, project. Because I, I was reading some part of the act which was talking about the electronic conveyance you know, functionality. Yeah. But for want of time, I'm sure tomorrow morning, uh, if our viewers join us and listen to us on the Happy Morning Show, uh, would find time to explain some of these technical details to them as well. But Beatrice, I'm grateful uh, you made time to join me tonight on Fact Sheet. Uh, Nana, I'm grateful you made time to join me tonight on Fact Sheet as well. Most uh, so my guests tonight have been Nana Kujo Esufi, who is Head uh, Land Registration Division, uh, Tema, and then Mrs. Beatrice Akwene Kum, uh, who is Head Survey and Mapping Division, Tema District. And uh, I'm grateful that you made time to join us. I saw several comments on our Facebook wall. I am grateful to all of you. Unfortunately, time is not our friend, and so I'm unable to read your text messages. But tomorrow, God willing, do make a date on a happy morning show. I'll be here with my team to, you know, delve deeper into the concerns you have. And some of these questions you brought here, tomorrow we'll table them and then address them. Good night. My name is Samuel Chen, and there'll be a repeat broadcast of the show at 10 a.m. on ETV. Enjoy your evening.